Hey guys, welcome back. So it's that time of year again, and in the tunnel here behind me, I've got something special I want to share with you. Something that shouldn't really be possible here in our Irish climate. For you folks in the US, that's the equivalent of a zone 8B, but for us here, it means we can get our last frost right up to mid-April, sometimes beyond. The air temperature is currently a cool 8 degrees, so it's kind of chilly out here. And overnight, we had a light dusting of snow on the Cumber Mountains just across the valley there. But it's a different story in here, so let's go take a look. Lemon tree, orange tree, clementine, another lemon tree, another clementine, and three more lemon trees. So I've successfully managed to overwinter lemon, orange, and clementine trees here in the tunnel by creating a year-round Mediterranean climate. And there was no cheating, there's no special varieties here. Each one of these came from store-bought fruit, which would have been imported into the country and been non-native. So let's cut to the chase. How did I do it? First is the polycarbonate. Because the sheets are corrugated, they have all these little air gaps, giving much better heat retention and much better thermal efficiency, especially when compared to traditional plastic tunnels. So the second element in this equation are these. The two tunnels either side and the windbreak netting that goes all around. Not only does it help prevent the wind from stripping away some of our much needed heat, each tunnel heats up creating a thermal mass, turning the whole area into a hot zone. They retain the heat for longer in the cold conditions and our little tunnel is right in the middle of that hot zone. So how do you do this if you've only got one tunnel? Well, one highly successful method of creating a thermal barrier around your tunnels can be to use hay or straw bales. You build a wall of bales around the tunnel, creating that much needed thermal barrier, keeping the heat in and preventing the heat loss. Another great advantage to doing this is that as those bales decompose, they'll generate heat themselves, which can be further absorbed into your tunnel, improving the stability of the environment. Step number three was just simple management. In their native environment, these plants get a winter time too, so they won't mind the cold temperatures too much. But excessive moisture combined with the cold temperature is a guaranteed route to failure. So for the periods of November to February, I cut watering completely. No water here in the tunnel whatsoever. Now you can see from this guy beside me here, his leaves are curling, he's showing signs of stress. It did stress them out a little bit, but it was only the week or two here. The stronger varieties, they took it kind of well. So cut all watering and replicate that dry climate that they're used to. Even though it's cold, they still do all right. So that's the three basic things that I did to make this a success. Polycarbonate, thermal management, and water management. Based on that, I think we could go a little bit further here. I have a couple of special friends that I've been looking after indoors for the last two years, and maybe they could have a new permanent home here. And that way we can keep doing regular updates and you guys can see how they get on. And maybe, just maybe, we can overwinter those as well. So let's do it. The pot that the pineapple came in was way too small, which unfortunately meant that it was badly root bound. Not much has changed since I put it in a bigger pot, so here I'm manually freeing out the roots by hand before planting it in its new location. Soil in the tunnel is our own homemade compost, which I've recently topped up with a 3 inch layer of mushroom compost. Mushroom compost is a great way to rebalance the soil pH and replace any lost nutrients without having to go out and buy any artificial supplements or additives. Stennis aureus, commonly known as dragon fruit, is a climbing variety cacti native to South America but widely cultivated across Asia and the subtropics. They can however take the frost for short periods. They thrive in zones 10 to 11 but have been known to survive outdoors in zone 9 also. Flowering only at night time, crossbreeding has resulted in some self-pollinating varieties but I'm not sure if this is one so I may have to start another in order to produce any fruit at all. Having been kept in a pot all of its life, this dragon fruit was badly starved for nutrients and it's not uncommon for them to throw out these aerial roots, like these guys here, in search of those additional nutrients. So all I gotta do is just chop them off because now it's got plenty below ground and it won't need these unsightly roots popping out anywhere anymore. One additional measure I'm making is to companion plant everything with these top setting onions, commonly known as walking onions or um, Egyptian onions. Um, they make a great companion plant because they keep a lot of pests away that don't like the smell or the taste. Not only that, they can help prevent fungus um, like leaf scab forming. They're also very tolerant of hot dry conditions, so they're an ideal companion to go into this environment.
So guys, that is how I was able to grow these citrus plants all year round here in Ireland. I hope you found the video useful. If you did, give it an old thumbs up, hit that subscribe button. And don't forget to stop by next time I'm down here in the garden. We'll see can pineapples grow in Ireland.